You know, uh, I was your age once, and uh, uh, looking back over my 42-year career, I realized that what I did was that I pretended to be what I wished to become, and I became it. So when I was um, six years old, I had an eye accident in my right eye and uh, uh, had surgery. And both eyes were taped shut for five weeks. And, and uh, when the bandages finally came, up, came off, I was so uh, obsessed, so enthralled with my vision that that became the single most important thing in my life. I began drawing, and I've been drawing ever since. Uh, I also uh, uh, really love to do woodworking in my dad's shop, and I love music. Um, I was a strange little kid. I'm afraid I was uh, inspired by Mad Magazine. Uh, I hope you weren't. Um, growing up, I loved Elvis Presley, and then when the Beatles came out, I, I really loved the Beatles, and that's when my guitar-making urge really kicked in into uh, full force. I used the Whole Earth Catalog uh, to find the resources to try and learn how to build guitars, but there weren't, weren't really any, any books available. Um, I eventually uh, w you know, went to college in Gettysburg. Uh, that's me. I'm afraid I confess I was a little bit of a hippie. Still have a little bit of that in me. Um, after two years in California living on a commune, I came back to the Lehigh Valley, my hometown of Bethlehem, PA. And uh, miraculously, I uh, uh, saw a billboard uh, on my way to Blair Academy. I, I, I miraculously got a job teaching art at Blair Academy. And, and on my way from Bethlehem to Blairstown, I saw a billboard very much like this, advertising Martin guitars. I didn't realize that such a legendary uh, maker of musical instruments was right here in the Lehigh Valley. So I stopped in and I took the factory tour. Uh, it was unbelievable. Uh, the, the rosewood and ebony and mahogany and spruce and koa wood and all of these exotic woods and magnificent craftsmanship. I was just flabbergasted. And at the end of the tour, I asked the receptionist if there were any scrap woods. Um, she sent me around to the side of the building and there in the dumpster I hit the jackpot that day. I uh, brought my Mustang around and I filled my Mustang up. An hour later I came back and I filled my Mustang up again. And over the course of my four years of teaching, I think I came back to the dumpster more than 500 times. So much so that the foreman at the back door, and his name was Harvey Samuels, uh, he was Pennsylvania Dutch. Do you, anybody know what that is? Harvey uh, had saved some wood for me. He called me the kid. And he said, uh, well, what do, you do? what do you do with this stuff anyhow? And uh, you know, I had two instruments in the car, and I, they were kind of crude, but I handed them up to him. And he said, uh, well, do you mind if I parade them around the shop once? And off he went with my two instruments. Well, he ran into Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin uh, is actually the fourth generation, fourth generation of Martins to run the business. At this point, uh, he was about 85 years old. He always walked, he held his pants up like this. He was a magnificent uh, individual, a, a, a real uh, icon in the music industry, and, and he loved the business. And he looked at the instruments that Harvey had, and he said, tell that kid to apply for a job. So Harvey brought them back out to the dumpster, and I was in there fully immersed. And uh, Harvey said, well, the old man says you should apply for a job. That's C-H-O-B. Chub. Well, I was filthy and, and uh, looked like what you saw. I brushed off, straightened out my hair, went around to the front of the building to the receptionist. There she is. And I said, I would like to apply for a job. And she said, I don't think we have anything for you. And uh, I said, well, are there any openings whatsoever? There's one opening, very specific. I don't think you're qualified. It's design drafting. I said, well, I've been doing design drafting for 10 years. I've been te teaching design drafting for four years. I have examples of my draftings in the car. Shall I bring them in? And she was doing her nails. And she said, well, we're really looking for somebody that has some experience with woodworking. I said, well, I've been making jewelry boxes. 
and lathe turnings out of your scrap wood. It's going to have more in the car. Shall I bring them in? And I think she'd been really coached to avoid people like me. Um, she said, we're really looking for somebody that has some experience with musical, musical instruments, guitars. Well, I said, um, here are some instruments I, I made and, and uh, more in the car. And, and reluctantly, she called Human Resources. She called somebody up and they interviewed me. And after about five minutes, they realized that they had kind of landed on the right person. Uh, the right set of skills, being at the right place at the right time, everything was aligned. And they said, well, could you start tomorrow? And I said, well, no, I have to go to the Bob Dylan concert. I could start on Wednesday. <laughs> so that, that was 42 years ago. And, and, and what I, I didn't tell them at the time is that I would gladly have done the job for free because I couldn't believe I had finally found uh, um, an occupation, a career that mixed my love of art with my love of woodworking and my love of music. And, and I was just uh, uh, had landed upon the, the, dream, the dream career. So I got right down to work with drafting. And you know, uh, mostly I was drafting individual parts, uh, the, the internal braces and the, the uh, rosette and the bridge and the, the uh, head plate and, and the parts of the guitar. But what I really loved was the assembly drawings uh, the, the uh, composites of everything coming together. And this is the face view drafting of, the, of Martin's iconic dreadnought, the D28. And, in, and being an illustrator, I, uh, uh, after I finished this, I was quite proud of it. And I, I, I made a, a Velox print and took it home and, and uh, created this illustration uh, that Martin has been selling ever since. They sold 4,000 of them. So. Um, I, I really was uh, getting down to just loving the, loving the job, so much so that uh, after a full day of, of work, I would go home to my own shop and using uh, what I'd learned, all the dimensions and everything that I was learning from the drafting and being around great guitar making, I started making guitars in my own basement, most of which were experimental in nature, this being made of African ebony and very unusual. Um, I also started making uh, electric guitars and basses, uh, some of which out of um, multiple laminations. Sometimes I would do a plan before I started, and this particular one was made with 126 pieces of wood from more than 30 different countries. It was made for Fine Woodworking Magazine. So I was fully immersed, fully uh, preoccupied with uh, guitar making, almost uh, to the exclusion of everything else. So once I settled into this job, um, a couple of uh, lessons that I learned. One is that don't be afraid to start in the lower rungs of a place that you love and, and know that you can grow into the jobs that you want. Um, invent your job and um, do what you think needs to be done. Uh, the job description will kind of naturally catch up to your own sense of self-motivation. And, um, um, and so that's what I did. I started hanging around backstage, and, and I'm a fairly outgoing person. Um, uh, musicians were always excited to see the representative from Martin Guitars. And, and I found uh, pretty quickly that musicians have definite ideas about what their guitar needs to be. So I started having those conversations backstage, and it led to the development of signature model collaborations with each artist. And this is Crosby, Stills, and Nash uh, backstage, and David Crosby trying out uh, a 12-string that I uh, made up for him. Um, I can't tell you what, a, what an incredible experience it was to uh, collaborate uh, uh, with Johnny Cash. He actually. Uh, called me uh, on the phone and said, hello, this is John. And I said, John who? He said, John Cash. And I said, I've been waiting my whole life for this phone call. And he said, I've been, making, I've been waiting my whole life to make it. So this was in Telluride, Colorado, presenting him with the first prototype of his uh, black guitar, uh, being the man in black. I, um, I did a great project with Willie Nelson. And I, ha I have to confess that I almost got arrested this evening. I'll save that story for later. 
Um, one of our, I think probably our greatest collaboration has been with Eric Clapton. This was uh, backstage at the Albert Hall in, in London. And uh, this was the very first of 11 different projects that I did with Eric. Um, this guitar, we did a limited edition of 461 guitars. We took the prototype to the trade show and the entire edition sold out in 15 minutes. That's uh, $8,500 for each guitar and royalties going to the charity of each artist's choosing. In this case, almost $100,000 to Eric's charity. Uh, Paul Simon, uh, he's still playing this guitar today. Um, each of these projects has a tremendous number of uh, great stories about the guitar and about the personal interchange with each artist. This is uh, Sting in New York City. Um, the significant thing here is that he's very rainforest friendly, as you might know, and the result of his projects uh, were that we started uh, making guitars with uh, responsibly forested hardwoods that um, uh, are completely rainforest friendly or green. And that's going to be more and more important as, as the difficulty in securing the traditional tone woods uh, becomes uh, much, much more of a problem. Um, perhaps my favorite guitarist, uh, Mark Knopfler of Dire Straits, uh, he, he, he flew on a helicopter from Philadelphia uh, up to Martin, and conversely, I visited him recently in, in London. Remarkable artist. And even uh, on summer vacation, how would it be to uh, uh, spend time with John Mayer on his ranch in Livingston, Montana? That's pretty cool. So my, my great friend Steve Miller um, suggested that I write a book about the experiences that I'd had with more than 100 different artists and their collaborations. So I wrote a book called Martin Guitar Masterpieces. Steve wrote, wrote the foreword to the book, and then we got to go on a book signing tour around the United States. Uh, this uh, picture was taken in Haight-Ashbury outside of San Francisco. So there's Steve and I on stage together, and this is much more recently. In January, um, I retired after 42 years uh, working at Martin. And instead of having a sterno dinner at some awful restaurant, I decided it would be much more appropriate to have a concert and to invite uh, some of the great artists that I'd had the, the pleasure of working with. And Steve was the first person to say yes. And uh, some of the other people. <laughs> uh, you know, I guess what I'm most proud of is that guy right there, John Mayer. Uh, flew all the way from California to perform. And uh, also David Bromberg, Nick Forrester from Hot Rise, Steve Miller in the center, Lawrence Juber, the two-time Grammy Award-winning guitarist with Paul McCartney's band, Wings, uh, Yorma Kalkinen of Jefferson Airplane and Hot Tuna, uh, Craig Thatcher, a, a, a local a great guitar player, and, and that's, uh, that's me over there getting to fake like I'm actually good enough to play with these people. So uh, much of my work in the last five years has been, has evolved through many, many different positions at Martin into uh, organizing and scanning and, and uh, digitizing the entire archives of Martin. More than 700,000 documents, more than 30,000 fantastic photographs. And this is the archive room. Also, uh, my job in, involves setting up, organizing, and directing the uh, museum at Martin Guitars, which is probably one of the best uh, museums of in musical instruments, at least this side of the Mississippi River. And um, the, the biggest honor for me was after spending uh, nearly 25 or 30 years serving other musicians and helping them with their guitars, uh, Martin agreed to use my illustrations on my own signature model, which is now available from the company. So one thing leads to another, and, and uh, dumpster diving, of course, led to drafting and prototyping, designing instruments, running the advertising department, working with the artists, authoring many books about Martin guitars, managing the archives and the museum, and eventually 
establishing uh, a sense of reputation throughout the music industry. And that's what has led me to you today. Pretend to be what you wish to become, and you will become it. So the very best thing for me is after, uh, after eight or nine hours of, of hard work, uh, come home, um, sit down and put some music on, or, or uh, YouTube, or, or maybe Austin City Limits, and see the results of my efforts be, uh, in the form of guitars and performances using the instruments that I helped to develop. There's nothing better than that. Thank you. <laughs>